Hello, welcome along. Here in this video, I want to talk about the MigrationWiz product. I want to talk about some changes that have been recently made. Uh, this was went into production, I think, late December, and it does affect how you set up a migration project when you're doing either like a tenant to tenant with Microsoft 365 or a G Suite to M365 uh, tenant migration as well. Essentially, what they've done here is they've moved the ability to put the application ID and the tenant ID um, from the advanced options, which you would do later. It's now part of the endpoint setup uh, when you actually create the project. So that really means that you have to do things in a slightly different order. So that's why what I wanted to do with this video was take you through um, how we would do that now and what, what ordering has changed so you can still successfully go and create these, these projects. So let's go and log into Migration Wiz. As you can see, I've done so here. And it does come up with a little helpful item here to say that setup changes have been made. And you can look at the, the help center. What they've done is also is put a, uh, an authentication method article in here. There's a few things here, but this is the one we're after. Uh, because what they put in here is how to, if I just scroll down a little bit, excuse me, uh, the app registration component that you need to do is uh, now full of screenshots, which is really nice. There's there's plenty of information in there to show you how to do it. I'm going to take you through how to do it myself, uh, just to give you a, a run through there. But it does have a good article on really what we're achieving today, because this is the part that needs to be done first when you set up a project, not afterwards in the advanced options. It does mean that uh, a lot of uh, people ran into problems where they hadn't done this particular step and only find out about it when they go to start doing a pre-stage migration and obviously things failed because this has not been done. So um, let me go into the console here and start a new project and I'll, and I'll show you what has changed. So we kick this off normal with a mailbox project, as you would expect, and you've got the normal items here. So I'm going to put some details in these two. So nothing different up to this point. And you'll notice as well, we do an endpoint. I'm going to put a new endpoint in here. And we'll say, uh, give it a name. Call that one migration frog, M365. That's the tenant we're coming from. Endpoint details, which will be 365. And as you can see there, provide credentials. I will put those in as well. Like so. And we just add. And this is the part where you'll notice something new. So look for that. Here we get to put in the application ID and the tenant ID which, as I said before, we would normally do those inside the advanced options. So now we have to put them in here first. So I'm jumping into the console for 365 for the source tenant, and we're going to go down to the identity, which is where we find Azure AD or Entra ID, whatever you want to call it now. Uh, but here it is, the Microsoft Entra Admin Center, and this is the obviously the, the main settings that we need. What we're going to do is add in the uh, application registration. And we do that just by going to applications and app registration here. And see, there we are. I will go and hit new registration there. And we just give it a, a name. This name is just something for you. It doesn't uh, doesn't need to be much else, but we just call it uh, migration whiz there. Now, the second option, it does have to be the second one down here, the multi-tenant. And the platform selection needs to be a public client native. Now, this particular part here, we actually grab out of the help desk article if i actually just drag that over for you so you can see it that you'll see that's the part that we need to cut and paste in so that is obviously a good reference point that's the article i was showing you right at the beginning let me just drag that away again you can see i'm already got that ready to cut and paste in there so we do that like so and then we just hit register there now, that's not the end of it. There's a bit more to do yet. There's two other things we need to do. Firstly, we need to give the, the uh, application some rights. And we also need to uh, change the authentication model here. So we go to authentication and we need to go down the bottom here and turn on this guy. Now, that's an important step. Don't forget that one. That's good to do. So we save that. But the main one is the API permissions. We need to tell the registration what is it allowed to do on the M365 tenant? Now, obviously, we're going to be doing things with the mailboxes. We're going to pick up mailbox information. So the permission we're going to add in there is to do with the Exchange Online. So when you add the permission, we say APIs my organization uses. And do a quick search in there. Just do a search for Office. You'll find there you'll find the Exchange Online. And we're going to use delegated permissions for that one. 
and we want to go through here and find EWS and hit the tick box there and add the permissions. So that's really the only permission we need to add in there. But we do need to do the grant admin console, uh, consent sorry, uh, for Migration Frog that will say, yes, you see it's granted, and that's effectively finished up. So now to get that information into Migration Wiz, we now need to go back to the start of that one, Migration Wiz application that we have set up here. Just click on Overview, and it's these items that we need. So we need the application, which is the client ID, and we also need the tenant ID. So we'll grab that client ID. We just copy that to Clipboard, and you'll see if I just drop down here, there, I will be able to paste that in. And likewise, we'll do the same thing for the tenant ID, which is here, and paste that in as well. There we go. And then going on to the next step there, you'll see it will just come and give us the destination setting. So we're going to do exactly the same thing with the destination side. So really is an identical process for that, for the, uh, for the target tenant we're going to go to. So I'm just going to run through quickly and do that and show you the outcome of that as well. So the destination one done as well. The next step, it'll ask us about the coexistence. We don't want to do that in this case. So we just hit go and save, save and go to summary. That's going to check those items for us and make sure that it's happy that we put all the correct details in and the like there. So if it gets to this point, it means it's verified that you have done those items correctly and you can carry on and save the project. There we go. Now, what you will notice is if you do go into the advanced options, look at that. That's exactly how we used to have to do this to get those items in there. But you can see now it's done for you just by pasting those items into the, the endpoint setup. So really, it's just a, a nice, easy way of, of providing, uh, the, uh, well, basically getting those in there nice and simply. That's uh, that's obviously what we're after. So and then from that point on, you just use the uh, the project as normal. Nothing else has changed on the, the actual usage there, but we can add people in and we can uh, certainly start a migration off. Now, something that you don't want to forget to do when you're starting out on these projects is you do have to add the application impersonation into the tenant still. And that's a, still a step. It's still in the help desk article that when you do the setup for the project. And it's important that you have that run. Otherwise, you won't be able to pick up the information from the mailboxes and obviously write to them. So that is the PowerShell line that you would need to run on the tenant to make that work. So I'm just going to go and get into PowerShell here, as you can see. I'm going to show you how this is done here. Let's connect to Exchange Online. Let's connect into uh, the, we'll go into the target tenant for this one and show you um, what we need to run in there. So let's see here, can I log in, CG E5 demo. Like so, and put the password in like that. It's going to ask us for the authentication. There we go. Which I'll just do quickly there. Okay. Good. And that will connect us into the Exchange Online back end. And there's two commands you need to do. The first one is to enable the organization customization if it's not turned on already. So here we just do, you can see enable. If you do org, you'll find it's a, a command you can just tab through and do. Now I'm going to get an error coming back on this one straight away because I've already done it. And you can see here, organization is already enabled for customization. So that's what that error message is about. But if you haven't done it already on your tenant, you're going to get obviously a, 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 just a normal um, blank response saying that it obviously has been done. But the command that's the key one here, and I'm going to put it up here so you can see it um, a, a little better. And that is this guy here. And that is allowing a new management role assignment for application impersonation and applying it to that service account that we created right at the start and we put into those endpoints. So if we run that one now, it should pop back with a response similar to that. And that means it has been done. So if you don't get an error on that one, obviously that's a that's a good sign. And you can see here that it has assigned that um, application impersonation right. So as I say, you're going to need to do that on both tenants, both side of the uh, the migration equation there. Um, but obviously that's still an important step that you need to, to go through and do. So just for fullness on the video here, I'm just going to quick add a user in here. We're going to take this user, Adam Lester, out of Migration Frog. We're going to migrate him to Adam Lester at planium.com and the other tenants. So you can see here, save item and close. That'll jump us straight back into the normal project window where we can um, start working on him. So the first thing we'll do here is do a credential check on this here. You can see verify credentials. Now what that'll do is actually go in to the back end of both of the tenants 
and make sure it can connect and pick up Adam Lester's details. And then it will also check on the target tenant. Can I get into the tenant and pick up Adam Lester in the target and have the ability to write in there as well? So the verify credentials on your first user on a migration like this is very important. It's going to set the stage for all the, the testing of those connections that you need to do. And it means that obviously if that works, then then all the others are going to work as well. So there's really not much point doing a verify credentials across every single user. I mean, you can if you want, but really doing it on the first one is is completely adequate. You can see there we are. Verification started. We've got a submitted stage. So we'll just come back once that has done and see what it reports back. So you can see about four to five minutes later, it's completed the verification, which means we are now good to continue with our migration. So thanks for watching. That uh, concludes what I need to tell you about today, about these changes to the Migration Wiz console and how we set up the project and how we set up those endpoints. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you.